Welcome to Beast TV. Tonight, we welcome back Eric Tipton, a man who leads by example. If crap starts hitting the fan, you better hope he's standing beside you. So get you a fresh dip and buckle up. Well, surprise, surprise. Looks like we got Slade Monk and Donna Holman on here. They already crashed the party. They already <laughs> crashed it. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing tonight, Larry Porch? The second? I'm doing great, man. Fantastic. You look, you look tired. I'm always tired. Well... <laughs> We got our hands full tonight, don't we, with this show? Oh, yeah. It's going to be wild, but it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be one for the record books. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and introduce our guest, our real guest? You mean they're not all real guests? <laughs> <laughs> Our scheduled well, guest. Our scheduled guest tonight is the man himself, Eric Tipton. He is our newly crowned leader for the Outlaws. And one of the best field researchers I know and have had the honor of going out in the woods with. Eric, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic, guys. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. Great. Eric, before we get started in our show, we thought that uh, everybody hears us talking about Slade Monk and Donna Homa, and we just thought that it would good be good to bring them on and let you talk to them for a few minutes. So why don't you introduce Slade and Donna for us? Well, hi, Slade and Donna. Look at them, the little cute little couple there. <laughs> <laughs> these two i'll tell you what i i met uh i met slade uh probably about uh three maybe four years ago three years ago Something like i that. met i met uh met donna two was it two years ago three? has it been three three years yes. so yeah. um and i'll be totally honest with you man I, I fell in love with both of them man when i when i met both of them i did and and they just they bring so much to the outings when when we're all together, it's 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 a great time. These two are just full of life and full of fun and love. It's 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 fun. <laughs> it's it's really fun with these two. No doubt, it's a hot mess at times though. At times. <laughs> <laughs> Mess, but we we enjoy it. We do. We have a good time with you guys. Well, you're the camp champ. Woo, 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 woo. I, do, I, have to, I do my part. Who gave him that title? Me. <laughs> yeah. I don't care nothing about going out Bigfoot. I just go to hang with my buddies. <laughs> I go to cook and, you know, take care of people. And make the fire. Yeah, you make the fire, keep the fire warm. That's one thing we got to admit. If we go out on a big hike, Eric wears us out, and Slade makes sure, him and Donna, they make sure we got something good to eat whenever we get back. That's right. No it, doubt about it. It varies from lasagna to chicken soup, chicken soup to burnt biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> it just depends on, you know, what's going on. There's a lot of things you got to be watching now. You got to be. Somebody's got to be watching the time. Or, you know, if you get called on to watch the time, that's your job. And then somebody's got to be, you know, stirring the fire, watching the coat. A lot of stuff going on there. It ain't easy as it sounds. <laughs> a little bit this past. I burned, I burned three cans of biscuits on both. <laughs> 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 had to cut the bottom off all the biscuits. 
Yeah, we live and learn, you know. They all still got eaten, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, I was from Fayette, Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't work for Golden Eagle either, okay? No, but I just... <laughs> Yeah, sausage. Yeah, sausage. Yeah, that's our go-to. That's our go-to. Donuts. I would say there's Mark Henderson's catfish, but he never brings it. So. Oh. <laughs> he brings catfish. <laughs> he brings. Hey. Right, Poncho, Poncho. He brings a uh, uh, a uh, jalapeno sausage with cheese. Oh my word. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's Yeah, that was good. It ain't too that touch. was like the best. Uh, one. But uh, my nephew told me last night some dude down in Akron he sent me a menu of and it, that same jam was on there. So I said, "Kill a deer, let me know." Yeah, I'll, I'll... <laughs> kill a deer. <laughs> 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 uh, he so many a year. Yeah, yeah, kill the six foot and the eight foot, and I got a twelve. Well, Give me a back strap, okay? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> if you know what would be great is Kane would really appreciate uh, some of the, the the ligaments so he can make his arrows on the deer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that, that was means. Part, <laughs> that's part of this thing right here where my rock just fell out. Baby? If you lose that rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, I, I made this and Kane didn't. Well, God love you. you you're wonderful. This is what I learned how to do on our last trip. Take tree bark and make a necklace out of it. And we found a bunch of rocks. Yeah, we have arts and crafts. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been locked up with a big southern boy named Bubba. That's, what, that's exactly what would have happened there. <laughs> Yelling, roll tide. Roll tide. <laughs> yeah. Slade, looks like you got you a fresh dip. I did, just before we started. Yeah, yeah. We well, get... Look, look. Would not have a dip. We get so many comments about the intro and getting that fresh dip. And you and Bear are the reason that I put that in there. That's been in every, every show. <laughs> so get you a fresh dip and buckle yeah, up. Yeah. Put a fresh dip in there. Ain't no telling what may be said or what may happen. Or you may have to take handle some business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It has a tendency to bring out a loan sometimes, but that's all right. <laughs> we walked into that beauty walking up, and I had to pee really bad. And I walked in. Like, you gotta have a you gotta have a ticket. And I said, "Man, my the lady, my girlfriend's buying tickets back here." She said, "Well, you gotta have." I said, "I need to get in here and handle a little business." She said, oh, bathroom driver, thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got the pass. She let me through. Everything's, everything's good now. <laughs> Donna, you looking mighty spiffy tonight. Huh? Donna's looking mighty spiffy tonight. Go for work, boy. She's... Yeah, I came straight from work. Oh, pretty face. Yeah, I was out shaking and jiving and seeing clients today, so, you know, the, this tends to help. <laughs> yeah, come walking up the curb there a while ago. I'm, I'm 
I'll meet you at the corner. And she got some dude hustling. He's the director of athletics out here at the university. And he's a. Uh, I, I give him my business card. Yeah, he's giving business card, but I'm walking up and I'm kind of letting it be known that I, you know, she's oh, familiar there, and he's kind of. Oh, oh, hey, sir. Yeah, that's right. Hey, talk to me. Nothing. I didn't ask him for Let it be known. Yeah. Right, right. He be well staring. I hate to drag him around all over that lodge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I, you can't be, you can't covet my woman in front of me. It, it has to be. Damn Ricky Cam. <laughs> because in our group it's always obviously it's Eric that wakes up first at 3.15 ask Tammy and <laughs> <laughs> that alarm goes off at was it 3.15 or 3.17? 3.15 yeah so yeah. and then so he gets up and then and it's me and Slade and then Dan Ricky will be the next one up i tell you what though i got to give Eric Kipson some props here that last, last day they was in town mm -hmm. that last morning I got up and I, I guess it was like I'd had a long night. I probably did. You probably did. <laughs> I, you probably I don't did. know what had occurred, but uh, oh, I, I had, oh, he had a full cup of coffee. And he just had a cup sitting there, poured half of it. He go. Oh, that was nice. I said, "How about that fella? Give you his first glass, cup, half his first cup of coffee in the morning." That, that, and then I he said a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Slade and Slade and Donna, we really thank y'all for coming on. We it just it warms all of our hearts to see y'all. Y'all just we love y'all. We love y'all. Every one of you guys, man. Every all the folks that we go out camping with and and get together in our little clique. It's like I mean, it's surely been said before. We like a family. We are like a family. We bicker. We take jabs, we give jabs, we hug, we love each other. It's all in good, you know, all in the spirit in which it's intended, and it's all good. And I, I, I wish we didn't live so far apart so much, yeah. but we can't see each other but twice a year. But it's good when it when it gets here. And uh, and I'm so thankful that that I that he allowed me to be a part of y'all's group because I'm kind of just you know pulled in and I didn't know anything about anything um before I met before I started I, I've known Slade for 30 years but I I didn't know anything about Bigfooting so he has introduced me to a whole different world and I had experienced things and seen things that um that opened my eyes up to there's something out there doing something push it over trees we were sitting in that tent. Just me and her were sitting there talking that last night when y'all went out. We were sitting there, me and Vicky right. just sitting there, just sitting there hanging out. And the uh, all of a sudden you hear pop, 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 snap. It was like one o'clock in the morning. I don't know exactly what time morning. was. But... It was while we were down uh, on the four mile road. And I looked at her and said, what was that? I said, I don't know. Something pushed the tree over. Well, I don't know either. But it was impressive. Whatever. I don't care if it was a bear or a horse or but it whatever. Wasn't. <laughs> it was cool. And it happened, what, four times? Four or five times that week? Yeah, bear yeah. counted six. Six? Well, wow. there you go. Mm -hmm. And it was right outside of our 
site, and I didn't think that we would have any activity because of the the population. You know, it seemed to be there. There's a lot of birds and stuff around, unlike when we were at the first place uh, three years ago. Um, so it seems to me that when there's no nothing alive in the area, that means there's a lot of activity. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we love you guys. Thank you for having us. Um, and uh, let's do it again. Let's do it again sometime. We just kind of throw this thing together at the last minute. But let's, let's do it again. Man, we'll have you on for a whole hour and a half if y'all want to come on. Yeah, we won't be sitting in the truck next time. No, because okay? I'm We're sweating sitting, right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking on big one. Hey, her daughter's in a beauty walk here in the next two weeks, and they were no, we noticed tonight where somebody wants to, uh, uh, Lucy wants to be an anesthesiologist. She wants to be a lawyer. The next girl comes out. Uh, she wants to be cardiologist. Uh, yeah, and uh, a baby deliverer or something like that. And I said, uh, Anna Grace is going to be a uh, anthropologist, and she wants to discover bit and prove the existence of Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> No. You can hang your to do is hang up your phone and then go to youtube and go to the sawdust peace channel that's all you got to do so so when you're ready to get off just go ahead and hang up your chat hang up your phone gotcha all right love you guys all right yeah bye-bye wow i just Wow. Do y'all think we can talk about anything serious after that? No. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, the the thing about it is that people wanted some insight to what an outlaw's outing is like. That's a whole lot like what it is. It's all these different people with all these different talents that come together. And Slade Monk is our camp champ. Debbie Grant is our camp queen. Tammy. Tammy. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, Eric, what are we going to talk about now? (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea. Uh, Well, why don't you tell us some of the highlights that stick out to you from this year's camp out? Uh, well, actually, I mean, one of them was, uh, meeting, um, meeting James, uh, James Armstrong, meeting, meeting Austin, uh, and, uh, Spencer. Uh, that was, that was really cool. Um, getting to meet those guys. I'd heard a lot about them. And, um, so yeah, uh, I, I, I really enjoyed that. I wish, I wish I could have had more time, um, in the field. Uh, but the outing is, is more for just really getting together and, and, um, sharing time with each other. So, uh, that's, that's really, you know, one of the highlights Uh, that I really enjoyed with this outing. It's kind of like the best of both worlds, you know, to where we have a base camp and and we get to socialize and see people we haven't seen in six months. And, and then we get to go out and we get to actually um, 
put boots on the ground out in the woods and get to do some research. So it's just, it's a really a good time for me personally. Yeah, I, I, I so look forward to it, man. It's for me, it, it's, it's like Christmas morning, you know, you can't, you can't wait to wake up Christmas morning as a, as a child. And, and that's the excitement I get when, when that time gets closer and closer and closer and, and knowing that we're all going to be together and just really have a, a week of, of forgetting about the world and, and being with each other. And, and, and that's, yeah, you, you can't, you can't buy that. No, you can't. Larry, what's your thoughts and your highlights from the camp out? Well, I agree with Eric. It was good to meet Spencer. I'd already met James and Austin, but I think this year the addition we did where we added the little venture of hammock camping instead of staying in the base camp the whole time, I thought that went really well. I know Debbie and I took Spencer out and we had activity and then we all went out, Eric Kane, Debbie, Shelley, Austin, myself and Mark and y'all told me we had a lot of activity it seems like i fell asleep because i stayed up all night the night before with spencer <laughs> but i know there's quite a bit of stuff going on but every year it seems like we tweak a little bit and we add a little different dimension to the research and i think that's important because you don't get in a rut and we all have got to a point that what we do leads to certain results, but we're trying to move forward to more results. So we're trying to figure out how to get there, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, when we went to the cemetery, what did you think about that activity that we had there? And actually it, it kind of threw me back a little bit, to be honest with you. Um, I, I guess, I guess because I, I wasn't walking into a, an area where I was expecting something. I really wasn't, you know, uh, if, if anything was to happen, I was thinking, you know, it may be, you know, something out way out in the distance from, from a call, you know, and, and that, that, that wasn't the case, <laughs> uh, these things, and I say things, plural, I, I, there was more than one. I feel there, there was more than one there uh, just just because of what was going on on, on both sides of us. Right, right. And um, I quickly ruled out bear. Um, I come from, so, you know, up here, it's not like heavy bear country, but we do have bear. Um and same size bear that's that's down there, and I know how they act in in the evenings, and I know their their grunts and their moans and their calls when they're when they're calling females. But this that we had going on at the cemetery was more of a um, how, how do I put it? It was more of a uh, kind of like a dominance dominant thing to yeah. us of of just letting us know strength not not overwhelming not not you know really aggressive or anything but just letting us know that you know I, i'm bigger than you <laughs> yeah so i i i enjoyed the cemetery i really did i like i said not expecting anything going going up there and then getting what we did uh yeah i i enjoyed it you know, it was about a two-minute walk up that hill up to the cemetery. It, I could not get my eyes to get my night vision. And I just, it was like you couldn't see, I couldn't see the hand in front of my face for the first 10 minutes or so. And I know me and you walked all the way up to the cemetery and had people behind us, but it seemed like, me and you really, we heard something off to the right, 
that was mm -hmm. stepping around, and then we heard it over to the left and something moving around over there, and then things started to get thrown. We had a tree break and come down. Uh, it was just a lot of activity that was going on. Yeah. And it, it, and you're exactly right. I mean, we were, I couldn't, I couldn't see, yeah, I couldn't see, you know, two foot in front of my face. Um, and you know, that's, that's one thing that, that really, it takes a lot, you know, for, for somebody that's, that's been in the situation and has had a, a full on sighting, uh, whether it's aggressive or not, um, you you just you see the the magnitude of one and, and the size of one, you know what they're about when you see them. So then you put yourself in a situation like that, and it's completely dark. It's black. You can't see in front of you, but they're there, and it, it takes you to a whole nother level. It 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 truly does. Uh, but it's excitement. It's adrenaline. Yes. Larry, what was you t your take on at the cemetery? Well, I was bringing up the rear as usual, I think. And I could hear, I guess y'all were far enough ahead of me that I didn't hear the movement. But I did hear the log or what, whatever was thrown and come through the woods and crashed down and then heard what was possibly a rock thrown and hit pretty heavily in the gravel road. And then I guess uh, the tree came down last, I guess, but it, it was pretty unbelievable. All, all that at one time, you know, and you, you just walked up this hill probably, I don't know, 200 300 yards and you were there <laughs> and they yeah. did, like they were on both sides of us it seemed like so i don't know and luckily i have not had a full-on sighting so i still got that naiveness stupidity that i'm not really putting in my mind the possibility of this huge creature well i guess i am i got it in my mind but I guess I can't visualize it like Eric can because he's seen it face to face pretty much with a little distance, but he locked eyes with it. So I know that that does make a huge difference. And I guess right now I'm a little naive and I'm able to rationalize things in a way I shouldn't to where I stay calmer than I probably should. And I overlook things that I probably shouldn't. And it's kind of funny, me and you talk about a lot, that we're tired of the tree breaks and things <laughs> being thrown at us. We're we're ready for something to step on out. Yeah, or we think we are. <laughs> yeah. I bring extra underwear. <laughs> I believe Eric asked me about... Uh, an outing or something we'd done recently. And I said, Oh, we had a tree break and this and that nothing blockbuster. And Eric looked at me and said, what the blank does it take? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, I've never thought of it that way, but you're right. <laughs> I'm overlooking yeah. stuff. I shouldn't overlook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like after, after a while, it's, it's you just it's second nature to you when when these things happen and I, it, uh, in in reality it shouldn't be you know no. we should be we should be just as as excited today with a knock as we were when we first started it right. you know um and so and and i you're right it, i i don't want to lose that excitement i don't want to lose that you know um uh, that that rush of getting that knock you know um but yeah that that night at the cemetery was was really 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 good we we also had a pretty good day hike 
where we were trying to hike in on the other side of sectors one and two so that we could might find an alternate uh, place to where we could set up uh, and do some primitive camping. And there was a little bit of activity that happened on that day hike. Yeah, yeah, that 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 was that was kind of strange. Yeah, that was that was weird. Um, because we had we had hiked uh, we'd hiked through that area, um, and then it was coming back, and Shelly, I believe, I hope I'm not mis mis speaking, but I believe she heard something. So so going going, you know, out looking for an area. We went through a cave. Um, it was opened up on both ends, and we went through that cave. But we were hanging out there for a little bit, and uh, we Kane uh, had actually climbed up on top, over top of the cave. At one point, came back down, and we all kept on cruising, you know. And and then coming back though, before we got to the cave, I think it I think it was Shelley that heard something. Um, and then, so then we get into the cave and we're, we're, at, we're, we're going through the cave and we step out on the other side of it. And I hear in the trees, uh, something coming through the trees above us coming from above the cave. And I look up and literally it looked like, uh, a basketball size mud ball, coming through the air and it hits this tree and it just, it, it busts and it, it disintegrates and comes crashing down. And I'm like, wow. And then soon after, I mean, right after that, then I, I the, there was a, either a, a loud snap or, or a knock. One of the other, I, could, I couldn't really tell because I was still fixated on what just came down this tree <laughs> uh, that hit this tree. So, we kind of hang out for a couple seconds and wow, you know, and, you know, so we, and then it, it was me, you and me, you and Shelly, right? Right. Mark? Right. Okay. And then the rest of them were maybe two minutes behind us. Uh -huh. um, and then they come up uh, to the cave and they're telling us this when they get to the, to the trucks and they come up to the cave and they had interactions with something. Um, so yeah, that was, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Larry, do you remember what happened? You was with the second group Were you, or were you too far behind the second? Well, group? we could tell, well, it sounded like something was paralleling us from above us, first of all. And then I think we had something thrown at us and uh, we got to noticing rocks were pretty big rocks were in the middle of the trail where people didn't notice them whenever we came through initially on our back trail. I know Spencer pointed it out that these rocks wasn't here before and they were pretty big rocks and laying right in the middle of the trail. Don't know what that was about or don't know if we just overlooked them on the way in or what, but that if we could hear movement and one time Kane was going to cut across a ridge whenever we heard the thing being thrown and I told Spencer and Debbie, oh, it's probably Kane. And then Kane caught up with us because he couldn't get across the ridge like he thought. And we asked him, did you throw anything or anything? And he's like, no, I hadn't done anything. I thought I, I well, he may not have said he thought he heard movement or anything, but he did say that he didn't throw anything. So, and that's about all I can remember. Well, we have been listening to, we've been reviewing audio and it takes a long time. I mean, for every second that's recorded, that second is reviewed and analyzed. And Shelly this morning sent me 12 clips of possible Bigfoot activity. But one of our backstops is 
we will pass this audio clips around and see if everybody comes to the same conclusion. So we're not quite there yet with reviewing these clips, but we do have a, a few, uh, two clips. And so I'm going to play one now. And this first one, it's like you hear something that shuffles in the the ground litter and a few seconds later you hear what appears to be a whoop now this whoop it is in the frequency signature of what we look for if it is bigfoot activity so we're going to go ahead and play this audio clip now That was something that we didn't hear when we were at camp. And this was when we did some primitive hammock camping at a area that, that Kane and Eric and Larry and myself had been researching. So that was pre pretty cool. Uh, Larry, did you get a chance to listen to that whoop today? Yeah, I did. And like I said earlier, I think I was asleep by what seven thirty yeah. at night. So I missed out on a lot of this live, <laughs> which may be good because I may have been wanting to go back to the Jeep from all the things they y'all said was going on, <laughs> <laughs> or hide under somebody's hammock. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't do that, would we? No. <laughs> Okay, and this second clip happened, um, and this really is still early because uh, Larry was the only one that had gone to gone to bed, and uh, I don't think he was really gone to bed. He was laying underneath his hammock, but um, so we'll go ahead and play this second one, and it is what this is it. It appears to be an object that was thrown, and we'll play this this clip twice. That was some pretty cool stuff. We've had a lot of things thrown at us at where we were hammock camping at. Eric, can, can you review for us some of the other times that we have been in this spot and some of the things that have happened to us? Oh, <laughs> we've that, that, that they just heard. <laughs> um, we've had that multiple times, uh, different, different times that we've been there. Um, we've had branches come through the trees at us. Uh, we've had the, the, the breaking of, of pretty sizable branches, uh, that will come down. And one thing you have to really listen for when you're hearing these things to rule out, you know, natural or, or manipulation and and I, I give this to Kane. Kane, you know, he's the one that really brought this out. And but so when you're hearing something break, you're hearing a limb being broken off of a tree. If you've heard one just naturally fall, it's crack, 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 and you can hear it tumbling through, you know, and then smack the ground. That's natural when you hear a controlled break, what we call a controlled break, you get the snap, snap, crack, nothing, no sound. It's, it's being held, it's being manipulated. It's, 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 you know, controlled by something. 
um, so you don't get the, the, the crashing down to the ground. Um, we've had that on multiple occasions out in this area. We've had vocals uh, in this area multiple times. Um, the, like I said, the tree branches coming through the trees, I, I witnessed two of them just, just by luck. You know, I should have played the lottery that day, <laughs> uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, two, two branches in two different locations, uh, that, that, that came in on us. So, and that day, actually there was, I think three, because we, we felt leave before, right before we left. We felt like we were triangulated. So that gave us a count, obviously, of three uh, on, on, on that trip that we had there. So it's, it's a multiple things that, that we get out of this area. We're just scratching, really scratching the surface. There's, there's, uh, there's the other area. There's, what, two, two other areas that we have marked out that, that we haven't even been to yet. Why don't you talk to us? I know a lot of times people ask, well, how come y'all go out in these areas and y'all have things happen to y'all? And and I go out and nothing happens. Why don't you enlighten a lot of our viewers on what our recipe is as far as how we prepare ourselves before we even decide what area that we're going to go into? Well, for one, I tell a lot of people to go, go out expecting nothing, you know? Um, and, and it's like, it's like going to Vegas and thinking you're going to, you're going to bring down the house. You're going to, you're going to take the house with money. Um, the chances of that are, are sometimes slim to none or most of the time slim to none. So don't go out with, with the expectation of you're going to get interaction. We have hiked, Kane and I have hiked many, 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 many miles and hours with, with nothing coming back. Um, but the, the areas that we do go to and the areas that we do get uh, interaction from it takes a it takes a lot of, uh, of of research prior to going out. We study the maps. We study Google Earth. We we look at at really uh, just just areas that 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 nobody wants to be in uh, because of the terrain and 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 what's there and and ruling out. And that's one thing that we do is we want to, we want to go in that far and that deep so we can rule out certain things. We can rule out human manipulation of what we find uh, structures or, or whatever. We can rule out human manipulation of this because we're so far in. Um, and then just, just knowing the terrain, knowing, knowing, where they are knowing the areas that that would be suitable for them and where they would be comfortable uh in, in their you know natural you know habitat or state or whatever however you want to say it um to where they're they're not on the defense all the time they don't they don't have their barriers up all the time they're you know they're they're comfortable and these areas are very, very deep. They're very remote areas. We know this. So these are the areas that we key on. You got to get off the hiking trail, you know, get away from the hiking trail and, 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 and go in, study the map, study the terrain, study your topo map, study the trains, but look at the wildlife in the area, know what wildlife's in the area, know the vegetation of the area, know the water, water source in the area. Um, know the seasons if you're going to an unknown obviously in your state where you're at you know the seasons and what each season holds if you're going out of state if you're going somewhere else understand the seasons understand you know what a summer's like in that area what fall is winter spring all of it all of it comes into play how harsh are the winters if you're going in winter time you know what are the winters like what what is the rain season like all these, all these things you, you have to, you have to research when you go be prior to going to an area, you, you have to look at all of this, all of this comes into play. And, and that's what we do. This is the diligence and, 
and and what we do before we even put our, our boots on the ground in an area. Um, and I think that that has a lot to do with our our success and 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 what we do. You could definitely eliminate a lot of areas by studying the maps and also looking for to connect the dots. What has worked in the past so that whenever you go to a new area, you're looking for the same landmarks, the same things that you can, instead of looking at 200,000 acres, you can start narrowing down and looking for where you want to put yourself at. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I mean, once you, once you get out there really and, and you start getting into this, and you start getting your first interactions when you first go out and and you know the lay of the land, you know where you're at. And I just got an interaction. You you've you've done your due diligence, you've 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 ruled out human manipulation, you've ruled out known animals in the area. You're you're starting to put a a strong theory together, base theory together of this is something other than human or known animal that I'm hearing something's happening. Look at the terrain, look where you're at, look how far away you are from, from um, a human activity, trails, campsites, wherever you're at, uh, housing development, wherever you're at, just understand that terrain and then adapt that terrain to the next place you go to, you know, um, uh, find, find, find that same kind of setup you know, of how far in was you? Okay, so I'm going to go to this new area. This is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the top of map, man. This looks really, really nice. It looks a lot like this area that over here where I was getting interaction. I'm going to try this area. You know, it's it's all it's all close your eyes kind of and, and throw the dark. You know, it, it, you know when, when you're first getting into it, it, it really is. It's trial and error. And, and you go out and, and you try certain things. But once you start getting the interactions and once you start realizing the terrain that you're in and the areas that you're in and you go to those other areas similar to it and you get interaction there and then you start to understand okay this is this is where you need to be to really to really do research on these creatures this this is how far in you have to be yeah there are people that get sightings crossing roads. There are people that see, you know, a glimpse, you know, why they're hiking on a nature trail. These things do happen. They, I'm not saying they don't, but if you're into the research and you're into the why of, of figuring out what they are, what they do, why they do it, this is the areas you have to go to for that. And you also need to document this stuff. We're very fortunate to have Shelly read that she keeps up with all of our documentation. You know, if if we hit a spot and have some possible activity, what season was it? Was we near uh, hardwoods or was we near uh, softwoods like pines? You know, how close were we to the water? Uh, what was the moon phase? What was the temperature? All of these things help us connect the dots so that whenever we do go out, that we do have success. And I'm going to tell you, uh, and it's really not bragging, but Eric, and I, I think you and uh, Kane and Larry will agree that every place that we have struck out to in the past two years we have found possible bigfoot activity and i really think that says a lot for the way that we do our research before we even enter into an area and then when we get into the area that we're doing the right things in there yeah and that and that's that's one thing that we all bring to the table you know, we, we understand how delicate 
this is. And it, it's, it is truly a delicate thing. You know, these, these creatures have been hidden for, for so long for a reason, you know, and, and so it's, it's very delicate. And that's why we, 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 that's why we do what we do and we, yeah. we take care in what we do and we, we, we coddle it you know, and we have such a strong team. You know, I was saying this earlier uh, before the show that the team that we have with myself and you and, and Larry and Kane and, and Debbie and, and, you know, in the future, uh, Spencer, um, it's, yeah, it, it's, we, we have a very, very strong team and we, we all bring in Shelly, we all bring, so much to the table but it's it's the it's the uh the passion for it and understanding you know uh the the delicacy uh, or the, the being delicate about this and, and how we go about doing it uh is is i think it's one of the things that really makes us so strong in what we do i agree larry what would you like to add to this well I was thinking back whenever we first started how we were going to LBL and we did put ourselves out away from everybody and this and that. But I can remember many nights we camped out there and had absolutely nothing happen. And since we've got together with Eric and Kane, whenever we go to these places, we went to Ohio and I was floored by the activity we had just walking in and getting camp set up. I was like, holy crap, this is going to be one heck of a weekend. And it was. And since then, we went to Kentucky, and it's been the same way. The first trip in, we didn't actually hear as much activity, and then we fine-tuned and went to a different spot that y'all had located on the typos and everything, and it was off the hook, too. And it's just it can be done and we've combined what we do with with what eric and kane did what we did we've combined them i hope they've learned something from us i know we've learned tremendously from them but it has been great and i'm looking forward i know right now it seems like we're kind of stuck at a point that we're getting interaction and I'm unsure what to do to move forward to get more or what. What are your thoughts on that, Eric? I know we get trees pushed down, things thrown at us. You have any ideas? Well, for the for this area here, I I, I really want to get over to uh, uh, sector one, uh, the the location we have not been to yet. That is still where I, I honestly believe that once we get there, it's, it's going to be amazing. Um, establishing the trackway. So our, our next step, yeah, we, we can talk about interaction all day and, and breaks and all that. But moving forward, now that we have in a very small portion of this vast area, um, we have established a trackway. We have not established a certain travel pattern, but we have trackway. So if we can get into sector one, if we can get that far back in and into sector one and then establish the, the trackway there, um, the next step really is to get on that trackway and, and start, start uh, stamping time and date to right. their traveling through. Uh, once we get that and once we narrow that down into when they are traveling through that area, then that's when we can then start looking at getting in in front of them like we did at, 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 at Salt Fork uh, up here in Ohio. Um, so that's the next step really is to, in, in this area, um, get, get the time and the date. And, and get that narrowed down to at least a one to two day window to where we can then, uh, you know, set up 
and and get on that off that trackway, but on it, you know, if that makes sense, uh, at least a day to two days prior to them coming through and and be in, in different locations, you know, throughout that trackway. And then hopefully we will be able to observe them coming coming through through the area. That's that's where I want to head. That's that's for me, that's that's the next the next level. Uh, I agree with that, and I, <laughs> I hope we can get to that level before I can't get out there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're running out of time. <laughs> the, clock, the clock is ticking, brother. The, the clock is ticking. Larry, have we had any questions for Eric? Well, well, most people are just now getting here because the time was messed up on the YouTube, but at this point, I have not seen any questions. Okay. Well, if you have any questions, make sure that you put them in all caps for us. It makes Larry, it's easier for him to spot them. And we want to ask everybody, if you're watching tonight, if you haven't hit that like button, to go ahead and hit that like button. And uh, it helps us a lot. And... Another thing that really helps us, if you share this video, uh, we're just really, we're a little rinky dink channel and we're just, we think that we have a lot to offer to researchers out there to help them in their own respective areas. So share our channel, even if it's sharing it on your own personal Facebook page. It helps us with YouTube, uh bumping us up as far as recommended videos to watch so we just really appreciate everybody doing that for us larry is there any questions that you want to ask eric or anything that you want to talk about well now that I'm reading through this and my brain ain't working very well, <laughs> I'm sure I've got a hundred questions I'd like to ask, Gary. So if you've got one, go ahead, but I'll think about it. It's hard to read and think, you know, I barely graduated high school. Well, not really. I made it easily. Well, that's because you were a basketball star. Yeah, they gave me grades. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I know, I know it's it's been talked a little bit, you know, but one thing that did happen on on the outing is um, uh, Bear has has passed the torch uh, of with the outlaws. Um, and has asked asked all the outlaws at the outing and uh, asked if 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 they would uh, um, who who would who would take over for for bear and I was uh, voted um, to take the torch I I am I am honored uh, truly honored. Uh, to 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 have this, um, I know the history of the outlaws. Um, it's 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 a very rich, very strong history, uh, and and moving forward, that's one thing that I want to do is is keep the roots of the outlaws there, uh, and and grow it even stronger uh, than what it was. Um, and I, I believe looking forward to, to moving in, in the next, uh, uh, turn, turning the page, I should say, you know, in the, in the outlaw book and, and starting, starting a new chapter. And I really look forward to doing it. Uh, I hope I, I hope I, uh, I've got some pretty big boots to fill and, uh, yeah, I, I hope I can live up to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're excited about it. And I don't know, 
there's, I think that Bear couldn't have picked a better person as far as to, because this is, it's a huge responsibility. And I don't really want to go into what your plans are. I'd rather for you to talk to Matt Knapp when you go on Bigfoot Outlaws Radio and give more of kind of uh, what you have in the back of your head as far as things that you would like to do and as far as things and including people from the hideout because I think that's would be a great thing to be able to interact with the the fans and the people that that talk on the hideout and so I'm just I'm just really excited about it Larry what's your take on it Oh, I'm looking forward to, I know Eric has discussed with us privately some of his ideas and things that he wants to do, and I'm 100% behind him and looking forward to it. It's going to bring some excitement back to the group, and it may also expand the group in the future. So I guess that's all I'll say, because I don't want to step on Eric's (laughs) ideas we'll just see where it goes that's right that's right so yeah but uh this 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 area that we're at um i'm really excited uh, about it uh there's so much to do uh with this area it's produced enough to where uh, I believe we all feel it's produced enough to continue uh, to move forward uh, in in this area and surrounding and pushing even farther farther out just just from where we're at. Um, so I am I'm I'm very excited, and uh, it's I I I think I think we're on the right track. I I really do. I honestly believe that. I agree with that. I know you talked about Area 1, and whenever we went on that hike, just getting down to the area we want to be at, it was almost impossible to get down there, it seemed like, because we tried. Yeah. <laughs> and we gave up for that yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. It's it's tough, man. It's it's tough, tough terrain, uh, especially yeah, when you get into that thick laurel you know, and, and trying to navigate through it, man. Um, but there's just, there's so much there. There is, there's so much there that, that, like I said, we were just now scratching the surface on it. Um, but I, we, we all know if we, if we do it right, you know, uh, and I, when I say do it right, you know, I just, you know, we all come together, you know, we take our time with it. And a lot of times when I say do it right, that's what I mean, you know, for, for the people that are interested in cut going out, you know, or they may already have an area, but they're just starting into this and, you know, but they've had some knocks and they've had some whoops or whatever. When I say do it right, I mean, take your time. Don't, don't rush it. If you're getting the interaction that you're getting with the little knocks and the whoops, they're there. They're there. They're not going to go anywhere. So take your time. Don't rush it. Don't push it. I've said this in the past, and this is this is experience talking. You will lose them in a heartbeat. They will change everything they do. Their whole routines, man, in a blink of an eye, and they will be gone, and and you will be lost. You will you will be at at the very beginning again and starting all over. So just take your time, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's what I, that's what I mean when I say, you know, do, do it right. And, and that's what we're doing here. And that's what we're doing in this area. You know, we're not going in, you know, um, guns blazing and, and, you know, just bulldozing through we're, we're taking our time with this. Yeah. Do you think that they pick up on the difference between just the weekend hiker and a weekend researcher going into the area 
I really do. I honestly do because the weekend hiker is is tunnel visioned and they're on a trail and they've got that one track mine. And then the next thing you know, you got somebody out there that's off the trail. They're walking through and they're they're paying attention to every everything, every little detail. You know, they're looking at everything. They're paying attention to every sound. Their their heads on a swivel. So yeah, I I honestly do believe that. I I do believe that they they watch that and they 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 understand that that's one thing the hunting area i have i want to keep it a hunting area but i've seen signs that they at least pass through my hunting area but what i do generally is i just i'm a hunter when i go to that area i don't pay attention to any of that if i hear any wood knocks or anything i just keep on my route to my deer stand and I just hunt. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to make my hunting area a research area. <laughs> right. Right. So, and my son sure don't want me to make it a research area because he don't want <laughs> no part of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I do. I agree with you. There is a huge parallel. They're paying attention to what we're paying attention to. Yeah. yeah. Mo- most definitely. Yeah. I we, s- Go ahead, Mark. I see where Lane Goodspeed asked, do you all also do a written report? How do you archive audio, video, etc.? We do keep a written uh, account of what happens. And it's Shelly Reed is the one that does that. And you should see her composition books. It's just, I don't, she's got a stack of them. And if you was to ask her, you know, what happened uh, in 2016 at so-and-so place, because we, we had something similar happen to us, she will be able to go and tell you what the moon phase was, what the, weather was, what time of the year, what area we was in, where it happened, what time, but we kind of keep that for, it, we're not keeping it from anybody, but we just kind of keep it for our own personal benefit for us to c- help connect the dots. And I have, I've got audio clips and audio from from when I very first started this. And I have had to buy those external um, hard drives to keep this stuff on. It's like every six months, I have to go out and buy a new one. And we do we categorize them and then keep the original. And that's something, you know, if you're, if you're collecting 3,000 hours of audio a year, that that takes up some hard drive space. So, but to answer your question, Lane, we we're very very detailed in what we document. Yeah, you 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 really have to be, and you know, n- not only with that, but you've you've talked about this in the past too, Mark, and things that we do that. Um, you may see something um, and you're, you're, you're kind of working on it. You, you'll see it in an area and then you may see it somewhere else. And so you take that and you, you, you put it in your box as, as Mark says, you know, you, you tuck it away. It's, it's something that you've noticed, you know, so, and you're, you're starting to think about it. So you kind of tuck it away. So documenting keeping notes, keeping things like that. So if something does happen a year, maybe even two years down the road, and you can go back and something will spark your memory, you know, of looking through what you've collected and you go, oh yeah, yeah, right. And you pull that back out of your little box and you start looking at it again. And then here you are a year, year and a half, whatever down the road and bam, here it is again. And then that's 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 how that's how strong case theories, man, are Absolutely. collected and 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 start up and start rolling. 
you know, a lot of, a lot of facts are based off of theory, you know, um, and this is one of the ways that you do do that is, is documenting. I, I think it's really important. We all have our opinions and theories, but I think where researchers get themselves into trouble is they try to force a square peg into a round hole to where instead of, and I'm going to say this, let the evidence speak for itself. Don't try to make that evidence some type of behavioral pattern of what you feel like Bigfoot do in the woods. Make Let the evidence speak for itself. And if you can't come to a conclusion, then document it and put it in that box and see if it happens again. And then when it happens again, then you can pull your notes out, you can pull your audio out and your video out, and you can start looking for common denominators that will help you connect the dots. That is just something that I try to stress with new researchers is let that evidence speak for itself and quit trying to force it into into what your opinion is. Well, Mark, you need to be talking to some of these more experienced YouTube researchers that that square peg is hits on their YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, we don't have many hits. <laughs> That's because we don't put out bull crap. Yeah. You know, we put out yeah. what we find and what we don't yeah. find. Yeah, and I've, I've said that too in the past that, you know, if you if you just throw something out there with with no nothing with it, you just throw it out there, man, you'll have a, a friggin' hundred comments on it. Yeah. What we've noticed, though, is with, with what we do is we analyze what we have first before we put it out there, then when we do put it out there, you've got everything though with it. You've got the backstory, what led up to it, your 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 findings around it. You know, you've broken it completely down, and you put it out there, and you get nothing. You get <laughs> crickets, man. Nobody will comment on it. Comment on it, you know, because you've you've taken it all away. You know, you've shown them this is this is what this is what we do and and here it is and here's everything with it they and, won't even uh, like it and no no they, <laughs> they, they, they won't you know they, they won't even like it and that's you know but that's that's yeah that's kind of where we're at with that and that's good yeah it is we're it all is. good with that i'm, I'm perfectly <laughs> fine with that <laughs> We do have a question from Cheryl. She wants to know, does habitat play into how much or how less you can see a Bigfoot? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, there's There's been times, man, well, uh, four months ago, you know, I mean, it was in the middle of summer and it, it was in a thicket of, of like saplings and they were probably... 20 25 foot tall i mean a bunch of them just crowded and this thing cut loose and literally he had to have or she had to have one or the other had to have grabbed with both of of its arms grabbed five or six of them and just bang and pushed them completely down and let off this this grunt that put me back on my heels and just took the air out of the area i mean just exhausted all the air out of the area and i watch these these trees just come down and, and and come back up couldn't couldn't see it i mean because of of you know the foliage and and the the brush and uh there's been many 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 times man where we've been so close to them and can't see them um but i i have pictures of cane you know in in the fall where the leaves have pretty much gone off the trees and I've I've had a picture where I'd snap a picture of Kane and he's no more than 40 yards away from me and you can't see him. You just you can't see him. Yeah. You know, it's and yeah, they 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 do adapt. Then they can they can hide very well in it. I don't know if that answers the question or not. 
Oh, it did. <laughs> and it is amazing. The activity we've had in the past two outings that we've went on, you can see the things coming through the woods that are being thrown, but mm-hmm. you can't see anything that threw it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the trajectory of the thing being thrown and look that way. Nothing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nothing. You know? <laughs> They're amazing. No doubt yeah. about it. Yeah. So, but we'll get there. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll, we'll get there, man. I am very confident about that. Yeah. Candace wants to know if you have noticed any association of horse flies or other bugs to the proximity of a Sasquatch. I haven't. Um, and to be honest with you, that's, that's a great question. And yeah. actually that's something to put, put in my mind now. So that's, thanks for that. You know, that's something to really pay attention to. I've never, I've never thought about that before. Well, let's oh, gee, see. I was about to hang up. I think <laughs> don't hang up. Let's see. Any more questions? Seem like uh, I saw one from Jinky. Is it possible to cast a track underwater, like in a creek or in a track that's full of water? Well, <laughs> it, Andrew Meisinger has the recipe for that. And me and Andrew have talked about that. And I hope Andrew does a video for us on that because it it is possible. There's there's procedures and SOPs that you need to go through so that you can cast that track. So, but I, I personally, I have personally never cast a track. I have watched people cast tracks and have seen tracks that have been casted. But okay, it, well, well, don't don't tell me what Andrew has done because I, I have no clue. So I'll, I'll throw this out. I don't know about a creek. I've never tried like a stream or a creek, but a puddle. So I made, you know, obviously out of sticks, you make your little square box to go around it. But what I did was I took cellophane. And so, cause it's so light and I took cellophane and I laid it over, over the sticks, the, the box and I laid it over there and then I poured my plaster into the cellophane and it, it pushed the water out and I was able to cast the print and then peel the cellophane off of it when it was, when it was dry and it was perfect. Yeah. That's a great idea. But I have to look at Andrews. I'm, I'm, that's, I'm interested in that. Well, he was an archeologist for years. So, you know, he had a lot of Indian tricks that they would use in the field, you know, mm-hmm. whenever um, they, he actually worked for the state and they would go out and do things like that. So they had, a they, you know, kind of based it off scientific protocols and things like that, that they would do. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Larry, any more questions? We're yes, up. there is. Okay. Ray would like to know, do you think moon phases are involved? I would say with Bigfoot activity, most likely, but I'm just guessing. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't know. I don't honestly on my on my side of it. I I don't. Uh, I do look at moon phase. I I do pay attention to that stuff. Um, but I've never really looked at it as if it contributes to um, the interaction that we get. Uh, I I can't I can't say yes or 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 no on that. To be totally honest with you. Um, I think it, I think it plays into it, you know, it, it somehow, some way. Um, but 
yeah, I, I haven't really dove dove into it. Now that would be a great question for Kane. Um, you know, Kane Kane does a lot with with moon phase and and things like that. Well, we know moon phases manipulate animal behavior. Right. As far as, I mean, that's a scientific fact as far as in the animal kingdom. But we kind of come at it at a different angle. Is if you have a full moon, it seems these critters will not move in as close to you as they will if you have a new moon and it's darker out there. It just seems to be a behavioral pattern with Sasquatch that the darker it is, the closer they will move in on you. So a lot of times we do look at moon phases, but we're looking at it from a different angle that we we don't want them to start their activity way away from us and and start moving in and they're going to only come in so far because they are afraid that we will see them. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I can say that, you know, yeah. When you've got a full moon, we actually, we had, uh, what a three quarter moon, the, the, when we were out, uh, hammock camping this last time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it lights up the forest like a, like a flashlight, you know, and, um, so yeah, on, on that side of it, most definitely, you know, they, they will they will keep more of a distance away from you. Yeah. Uh, um, because it is. It's it's like having the having the kitchen light on, you know. <laughs> yeah. Larry, we're uh man, we're getting close to an hour and a half into yeah, this. Uh, but uh, Eric's still fresh. <laughs> he's, he's got to get up in about six hours and go work out well we got one more question that heather asked that i see off the top of well just scrolling and she wants to know do you have a primatologist or anthropologist that you share your evidence with or take your evidence to any scientific people that you have shared anything with or would? No, I, no. I, I would. I I don't. Um, but I would. Yes. I thought that would be your answer because that's where we're at too. We. I don't know that we found anything good enough DNA wise, or, I mean, how many footprints is Meldrum going to get that he right. can look at right right uh, yeah. until we stumble across a body or something I mean at this point they've seen most everything anybody can send them I would think yeah 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 I'm right there with you but most definitely I mean if if, if it was to arise if, if we was to happen to get that that type of DNA yeah, most most definitely, it would it would go to somebody. <laughs> Our buddy said he asked a question way back up that's in all caps, and I don't see it. I think he's playing a joke on me because I say his name every week. Now he wants me to say his name, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Spencer. Hi, buddy. Uh, Let's see, there was another question though. It was for Eric and it was, let me see. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rick wants to know, you got any news you want to share with anybody about the survival shows? <laughs> Hi, Rick. <laughs> Um, still, still kind of, kind of waiting. So, uh, they're, they're going through, uh, bios now, uh, that, that have been sent in for the next season. Uh, they're weeding through all that. So if, if something was to happen, uh, I would get a phone call. The next phone call that I would get 
would be telling me that I've made it to the top 35 and that top 35 goes to what they call hell week. And you spend a week with, uh, different types of experts, survival experts, um, uh, really kind of run the gambit on, on certain things, how to build structures, you know, um, vegetation. Uh, so you go through that. Uh, and then at the end of the week, uh, why all 35 of you are there, they pick the top 10 to go to the show and then you fly home for a brief second and then you're, you're off. So, so right now it's kind of just, uh, waiting and, and hoping I, I get a phone call. Um, but if I don't, um, my name is still there. It doesn't go away. Uh, I could, I could be picked, you know, for the following season, you know, so I'm in there. So, but yeah, so hoping to, but hoping, hoping to get a call. Are you hoping it's for a loan or naked and afraid? Uh, either or, um, <laughs> uh, me personally, it'd be a loan. Kane, Kane, Kane would probably, yeah. He'd be good with the naked and afraid. Um, Kane's so. probably filming an episode of that right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Him and his little Tom Tom. Yeah. He so. combined them all into one. He's alone and naked and afraid. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if I, if I do make it though, I mean, it, it's going to be, yeah, they're, it's going to be 90% of what you're going to see of me on that show is, 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 hunting 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 sasquatch you know <laughs> <laughs> so and i i will tell them that too well i think we've caught up on all the questions i know eric's got to get to bed so he can get up and go work out <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that ain't three, for a few hours at 315 it, it comes quick <laughs> Well, Eric, we really appreciate you coming on, and uh, and I I know I can speak for Larry. We miss you. We miss you and Kane, and we can't wait until we get back out in the woods together. We just we have bonded so well over the years, and it's just it's good to be in the woods with people that you know have your back. Yeah. Yeah. No most doubt. definitely. Most definitely. And I, I, I don't know, I don't know anybody else I'd, I'd rather be with to be totally honest with you guys, man. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate it. I, I, I love it and I, I can't wait to get back out there. So, uh, what is it? January? Are we, were we talking late January? Yeah. We're talking late January. Okay. Yeah. So, I can't wait, man. I, yeah, I love you guys. You guys are the greatest. And, um, yeah. So. It'll be fun. No doubt about it. I can't wait. Larry, do you have any, um, final thoughts that you'd like to say? Man, once again, Eric's fantastic guest as always. And I know we'll have him back on soon because we're going to have to dissect our next adventure together so it ain't goodbye it's till the next time Absolutely. till the next time that's right <laughs> well we want to thank all of our new subscribers and our faithful followers also be sure to check out our field evidence videos and let us know if there are any guests you would like to see on beast tv and we will sick Debbie Jones on them. Or if you would like to come on with us and talk about your evidence and research area, just post it in the comment section. And please don't forget to hit the like button and leave us a comment. Share our video. Also, Larry and I would like to thank Debbie Jones and Shelly Reed for all the behind-the-scenes work they do. And check out our sister channel, Beast of the Woods, and our friends at Bigfoot Outlaws, Dixie Cryptid, 
Night Callers and Bigfoot Odyssey. And don't forget, there is a GoFundMe page to raise money for equipment that is being bought for the Bigfoot Odyssey's expedition. Larry, would you like to elaborate on Kerry Arnold's plan of attack? Man, we're going in. That's the plan of attack. He's going to have thermal drone that he's going to use for night ops. And as he gets a heat signature, we're going to send teams in to try to get hits on our flare and hopefully close enough to get some good footage of something. And not die. And not die. <laughs> well... Thanks again to Eric for coming on this week. And we will see you again at the same bat time and on the same bat channel next week. Night, night, footers. This has been a Sawdust Production.